Today's world has reached unprecedented levels of connectivity. With integrated markets, flourishing trade and instantaneous communications across the continents. But how did we get there? When did it all begin? Before stock exchanges, trade agreements, long-distance air travel and mobile phones, there was the Silk Road. More than 2,000 years ago, Han Dynasty China, the Indus Civilization of South Asia, the kingdoms of Persia and Mesopotamia, and the empires of the Mediterranean all began to explore and communicate, trade and learn across the vast distances that separated them. And they did so not just across one Silk Road, but several overland routes across Eurasia, as well as maritime routes across the Indian Ocean. And they traded not just silk, but a magnificent array of resources and riches. So many goods flowed east to west and west to east. Silk, porcelain, tea, jade, silver and copper from China, perfumes and gems from Southeast Asia, pepper, teak and textiles from India, spices, gold, incense and shells from Arabia, furs and swords, olives and wine from Europe, and ivory and rice, timber and iron from Africa. The Silk Road truly enabled a marketplace across civilizations, fulfilling the oldest principle of economics, supply and demand. Great explorers came forth from all cultures. In the 13th and 14th centuries, Venetian trader Marco Polo and Arab scholar Ibn Battuta made lengthy voyages as far as China, providing inspiring chronicles of the rich diversity of life across the breadth of the Silk Road. In the reverse direction, fabled Chinese admiral Zheng Ha sailed his treasure fleet as far as Ceylon and East Africa. And there were many thousands more merchants whose journeys together shaped the lives of people from Africa to Asia. Each link in the geographic chain brought profits and goods sold onward until their final destination. Each new cart tugged across the land and ships sailed across the seas, created jobs for farmers, weavers and artisans. The caravans of the Silk Road became centers of safety. Oases became settlements. Settlements became towns. Towns became cities. Empires came and went, but the trading posts that anchored the Silk Road grew into leading centers of commerce. The Silk Road flourished both in trade as well as ideas. Monks spread Buddhism from India to China. Muslim merchants spread Islam to the Far East. The pious prayed for the success of trade missions and health of their customers. The ambitions of the merchant class grew, as did the risks of sending ever more valuable goods across the rugged landscapes and choppy seas. Caravans began together to protect against the elements, disease and banditry, to share the risks. Insurance was born. The interdependence along the Silk Road fostered increasingly formal mechanisms of mutual support, such as banking and credit. Today's globalization wouldn't be possible without yesterday's insurance. A modern world was born with the rise of the Silk Road. And just as the interconnections of a millennium ago enriched civilizations, the global Silk Roads of the 21st century hold limitless promise for global society. Built atop the ancient predecessors, today's new Silk Roads cover more than half the world's population and nearly half of its GDP. Whereas a generation ago most of the world's shipping traversed the Atlantic Ocean, today 75% of global shipping crosses the Indian Ocean. This greater Indian Ocean region now accounts for almost all the annual growth in world trade. The Suez Canal is expanding, ports are dredging deeper and airports creating new connections among the three dozen largest megacities on Earth. The great cities anchoring global commerce today form a lattice of progressive trading centers linking the Mediterranean Sea, East Africa, Southwest Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia and the Far East. Dubai has entered the ranks of the most connected global cities alongside London and New York, Singapore, Hong Kong and Shanghai. These 21st century Silk Roads hold the promise to elevate economies worth millions into engines of growth worth billions and countries generating billions into regional powerhouses valued at trillions. A new super cycle of trade growth lies ahead for industries firing in and across these major population centers such as petrochemicals, agriculture, construction, automobiles and retail. 
and a new investment wave will accelerate these essential connections between supply and demand. 2015 witnessed the creation of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank AIIB, which will be the largest coordinated infrastructure investment program in world history. Its ambition is to replace the old Silk Road's pathways with iron tracks for high-speed railways. More than $1 trillion per year is being committed for essential upgrades to these new trade corridors linking East and West. The new Silk Roads have much in common with those of centuries past. They remind us, first and foremost, that we will not grow alone, but rather together. And more than ever, we need the Silk Road spirit of openness and inclusiveness, cooperation and reciprocity, mutual learning and shared benefit. Underneath it all, we need insurance and reinsurance as the hidden hand of trade. For the ultimate currency of the Silk Road is trust.